I'm not sure how I got here. Good that I'm here, though, right? Here in bed? Okay, wait. I remember now. I took a car. Everything's fine. <laughs> I guess I did it then. When I, I went out and did a thing. That was fun, I think. It was nice to see Nora. I don't think my body is very happy with me right now, though. Uh, I think I'll just close my eyes and rest for another second before I can I get ready for bed properly. Sleep. Rainer's assistant meets me at the reception area with an, impa in, with an impassive look. She leads me through the building towards its center. Everything is glass and steel, clean and bright. Employees steal curious glances at me. Am I a curiosity to them? It's hard to believe this used to be my whole world. Eventually, we come to a conference room where Rainer is finishing a meeting. Evelyn? Nice building. Oh, thank you. I designed it myself. It's funny, I almost didn't notice that you were already back working for Skanda. You might have stayed undetected, but I was looking at some of our statistical outliers earlier this morning. Statistical outlier? That's me. Ideally, Eliza proxies would all perform the same, or at least quite similar to each other. In practice, there are some pretty big differences. Some people respond better to advice provided to them by people they perceive as having more authority. A deeper voice, a taller stature, a certain grace or beauty. Other proxies may be particularly empathetic, a face or a voice that makes you want to open up. There was one proxy whose sessions seemed particularly effective, so I decided to take a closer look. Evelyn Ishino Aubrey, contract proxy Queen Anne office. That's a fun trick to come back to your old company in secret. It's a rather dramatic drop in pay, isn't it? Or more than an order of magnitude. I don't care about that. But then why would you do it? It's for research. Research? So you're still interested in what you created? Let me get to the point. Why aren't you back here, working on the ELISA program? Why isn't any of the old team back? Because it's turned into a monster? Good question. Let's see. Damien Seabrook. There's no helping that. Oh. Shame, though, for such a brilliant career to be cut so short. Soren Lloyd Rose, the former program manager, resigned just last week to found his own startup. Very cute. I'm not a psychoanalyst like he is, but I can tell his need to be a maverick, even as he benefits from the system, has been the primary destructive force in his life. He can be smart when he wants to, but just as often he gets the wrong ideas and refuses to let them go. His ego gets in the way. That's why I don't mind him leaving to pursue his little dream of being an entrepreneur. He won't succeed, but I'm happy to let him think he has independence for now. If his direct nerve stimulation technology ends up taking off, I can always pull the cord and yank him back. Nora Plavnicki, senior engineer. She handled a lot of the front-end interface for Eliza, which is important, but less what I'm after. Plus, I doubt she's ideologically compatible with us anymore. You've spoken with her. You know how she is now. Mm. Seems to me she wants to rebel against everything and anything without stopping to consider whether it's truly good or bad. Not that it matters. I hope she's having fun playing with her electronic music toys. I know she would consider her work to be art, but... Well, who am I to judge? So condescending. Then, there's you, Evelyn. You simply dropped away. Gone for three years. Why? People keep asking me that. I've come back to kill you. No, no, no. Is it, it? Is this where we get the, like, am I back? I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> and then she shaves her beard in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I needed He's... some time to myself. I want to be vague with these people. Yeah. I don't want to... I don't, don't give them anything. some time to myself. Burnout isn't uncommon in our line of work. And still, three years is... Oh, it could be longer. It could be forever. Hmm. Well, that's a shame, though, isn't it? All that lost productivity. Who knows where we'd be if you'd stayed this whole time. You left before we began deploying. But you should know the analysts were very skeptical of us. Hmm. They were saying there was nothing special about Eliza. That our competitors already had equivalent or better offerings. But we, we have human slaves. 
so it's better. Mm. It's a good thing I don't listen to analysts. So far, the program's growth has exceeded every one of our targets, and we've outpaced the competition by a comfortably wide margin. We're a category definer. There's a quality to Eliza that makes it superior to all the other attempts to do something similar. You were part of the original team. Why don't you tell me what that quality is? What the? What are you asking? I don't know. We've probably what? been stealing human souls and putting them inside yeah. robots or something. Oh my! Yeah, it's Eliza's <laughs> people. <laughs> Eliza Green is people. <laughs> we're probably yeah. We're probably like doing something outlandish. Maybe maybe we are you know stealing people's tears and using that to feed. No, we probably kidnap homeless children and put them into a neural network that feeds the power processing of the Eliza AI, which what is what makes it like what it is. Like it reminds me of like simple Ricks. Like <laughs> Don't you wanna be with Simple Rick? <laughs> yeah, don't you wanna be with Simple Rick? And he's like eh. Yeah, the... we're har harvesting happiness. Yeah. And dosing it into people's brains. I'm more suspicious that they're just I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not really sure what you're asking. Hmm. Well let me return to my earlier question then. Why aren't you here to continue your work? You could be running the entire Eliza division if you wanted, but instead you came back undercover like a, well, like a criminal returning to the scene of a crime. I think he's worried that we're doing um, whatever espionage, mm. corporate, uh, espionage. corporate espionage. Is there something wrong with this company? You don't like us anymore? No, he's scared of us. Mm -hmm. It's not me, is it? Maybe that's part of it. You know what outstanding engineers have that mediocre ones don't? It's curiosity. Mediocre engineers tend to zero in on a single piece of the puzzle. They pursue technical breakthroughs, but ignore the larger picture. This is the type of talk that people who are successful like to talk about themselves indirectly. They're like, you know what makes people who are better than other people better? They're like me. My own attributes. Yeah. But I'm not going to say it directly. I'm going to imply it over and over until you see it in me and think I also am superior than other people. And I'm like, cool. Mm -hmm. Great. But you wanted to know how Eliza turned out. How it was working, didn't you? Even though you might have thought you wanted to put all of this behind you, you were still curious. You want to know everything. Not just how it works or if it works, but its effect on people, on society. Yo, I feel like everybody but Nora that we've talked to, Nora and Rhea kind of mind their own business. Well, Rhea doesn't really mind her own business, but she also doesn't like prod. But these two motherfuckers, they're really, this guy and the last guy, they're like, you know who you are. You're this person. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. You might be right, but fuck off. They're just smelling their own farts. Yeah, they're basically they're like putting their farts into a wine glass and then smelling them. And mm. then being like, you know the, who these guys are? They're the type of guys who think they're smarter than everyone and then especially think they're smarter than women and think only a woman as smart as them is worthy of them. Mm. And so, therefore, what's her fucking face? Not Eliza. Uh, Evelyn. Evelyn is is like this prime woman oh. to want to oh, have where because it's... she's 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 the only one worthy of them and their intelligence. Haven't we all seen those monologues from like dudes in movies where they're like, ah, oh, like you're like this like perfect specimen, and it's like great. Yeah, awesome. I'm a, I'm a specimen. You're not like other women. You can you can keep up. And you're like, mm. okay. Yeah. Like, oh, you're like worthy of me. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's okay to think in that line where you think I deserve better. Yeah. But when you're at the point where you think you're like homo superior, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> it's fucking, I feel like there's just a difference between... There's a Thinking difference. you deserve a certain type of person, which everybody does, and being like, I think most people are below me, and especially women, and so most women are stupid, but you happen to not be, so therefore, I desire you in my collection. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you have that instinct. The need to understand something complex from as many angles as possible. I need you to be this person because I'm attracted to you, and I don't know why. So, please, do that. Learn what you came back here to learn. And once you have what you came for, consider returning to your old employer. You can make a real difference this time. 
I really doubt I'll do that, Rainer. Well, don't worry about making a decision now. One more thing. You should go down and see Eliza for yourself. Sarah will show you the way. I don't want to invalidate that Evelyn is probably a really brilliant Yes. Person it's more the way that because... her brilliance is being presented. Yeah, because you know? she really is... A... Clearly, everybody wants her to work for them. And they think she's really, really talented. But I feel like the difference between how Nora has been treating her and how Rainer and creepy rape guy Soren have been treating her is very light and Well, there's a way to tell someone like, wow, like you're brilliant. You did a lot of great work. And being like, you know what great engineers have that mediocre engineers don't? It's like, if you want to pay me a compliment, pay me a compliment. You know what I mean? Like, He's framing it as if they, the two of us are just above above others. You know, we're on this other level. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Seems like the type of person who thinks that naturally people who deserve to be rich are rich. Oh, no. <laughs> you know? And, and eventually there will be a Listen, divide. Listen, the money chose me, and when the like prime of the human race ascends to space and leaves the peasants to starve i will be among them and then i'm like okay but who's gonna mop the floors the the lower rich people no exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> rainer hands me a blue badge with my name and picture on it this is my old employee badge he held on to it this will get you through the doors he mm. held on to our old employee badge for over three years. Seems weird. Seems extremely strange. <laughs> I've instructed the staff to treat you like an employee. Come and go as you like. Okay. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how much your creation has grown. We're being kidnapped. Rainer leaves me in the conference room by myself. This company. <laughs> Skanda. <laughs> Gah. Morning, Rockstar. Hi, good morning. Hey, I'm really, really happy you came to the show. Nora, you were right. We have to become cyber terrorists. Yes. I know you never really said it, but I know that's what you meant. <laughs> I'm glad I went. I know it's not like your usual scene, so I'm extra, extra happy about it. No, it's fine. I had an orgasm from your music, apparently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's what happened, right? She was, like, having... Yeah. She was pretty much describing having sex with sound. Mm -hmm. It was weird that Soren wanted to go, too. But predictable. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was thinking he could impress you somehow. Impossible. Oh, my God. Did she get brained? It was so funny seeing him there. Seemed to be enjoying himself, though. I don't know why he wants me to join his startup so badly. Or do you think he's just being a creep? He's being a creep. I'm sure that's it. I'm, you know what? You're a good programmer, but I just stay away from that guy. Because yeah. he's got that dream thing, and I don't trust. Why else would he do stuff like come to your show? I hope she doesn't get mad. See see why I'm glad I left that behind? I don't even want to think about that kind of thing anymore. I really love to make machines do things, but not in that style of environment. I'm sure he's he is asking you too, no? He's talking to everybody. Yeah, he is. So run. Rainer also found me. <laughs> God, we're like being hunted. I've been hunted. I feel like these we're just two free women we're trying like, to like escape. Escape and from these like billionaires. Like, <laughs> these billionaire men. <laughs> it's like a horror movie. Yeah. Just two like, alt-women just trying to be like, we gotta get out of here! Help us! These, like, unsuspecting engineers being like, oh, no, what do I do? And they're Rich like, men coming out like, you're not like other women! Ah! There could be, like, an episode of, like, Silicon Valley where they're like, come join my startup! No, come join my startup! It's a Black Mirror. Yeah. It's a Black Mirror episode. It's a Black Mirror Silicon of, Valley like, crossover. two smart, talented women and they just want to do their own thing and they're just so, kept being, like, hounded by male billionaires saying creepy shit. You know what? It also kind of reminds me of, like, like some Portlandia episode, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Where they're being just like ambushed on every corner, like, come join my startup. We're like, you know, <laughs> I don't know, gentrifying the juice industry. <laughs> 
We're ethically appropriating another culture, but ethically, it's fine. But ethically. And we'll make sure that every machine can be in any home because they only cost $1,500. It's like, you're not like other women. You are you can keep up. No! No! Right! <laughs> I, I study BDSM. It's it's fascinating. What do you think? Ah! Run! <laughs> Rainer also found me. That was fast. Did he want you back at Skanda? Yeah. He's trapped me here in the conference room. I figured. This is maybe an odd question, but why don't you go into business for yourself as a contractor? You could even start your own company. <laughs> Nor do you want to join our startup? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really a business person. You could just be someone who does some consulting. I do that sometimes, and it's pretty good. I like the flexibility. Come into some place, solve a specific problem, leave. Anyway, it's just a thought. I'll think about it. You'll come over soon, right? Yeah. And we need to, like, make a plan to how to yeah. escape these people. We gotta take them down. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Are you gonna, just gonna leave her hanging? Dude, I have... I'm really thinking about that. That running with, like, these billionaires being like, ah! come on. <laughs> like, saying, like, weird classist shit. <laughs> Giving presentations, leading meetings. I used to do these, those things. It wasn't bad at it. I wasn't bad at it, in fact. Could I become that person again? Pencils and paper. I read that some tech executives avoid using tablets and smartphones these days. Even the ones ones their own company make. Companies make. See? Mm. They don't want to get hacked. This is fresh. Maybe, must be someone's full-time job to take care of the water in every conference room. Tech companies are really in their own universe. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Oh, no. Ray Cookies. Bukari. Cookies. Cookies in the kitchen. Yay. Some of you already found them, I see. There's banana bread, too. What should I make next? Ray. I don't know. You kind of I like how you're so suspicious of, like, the cookies, like, no, I was suspicious that she, Yeah, I am. You know what? I am. What does a fulfilled life look like? It looks like an air conditioning unit with a plant on it. Yeah, it's kind of relaxing, though. It's very relaxing. Finally, Rainer's assistant returns and escorts me from the conference room. We went... We went an elevator. It enter. Began, we we enter an elevator, and it begins going down extremely fast. See, we're being kidnapped. Yep. It feels like we're falling into the depths of the earth. I'm not sure if I should be panicked or not. Yeah, start panicking. Nobody around us looks worried, though, so this must be normal. Oh my god, this is Umbrella Corporation. Ah! The elevator opens into a nondescript hallway with doors on either side. I'm All scared. Right. If you see the test tube with the, with the double helix in it, just go. Just, just run. run. Looks like the secret research facility in a movie. Yeah. Oh, my God. Where are all the kidnapped children? At the very end of the corridor, we come to a special-looking entryway. Sarah holds a door open for me, but doesn't follow me through. <gasps> Great. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm really scared. I'm scared for real. A server farm. Not particularly unusual. Why did Rainer send me here? There was a server farm. And the first resident, wasn't that, was that what it was? I don't know, the, uh, something. Wait. He made it sound like I would learn something. Here, they're like, hey. Like they're like, hey, like, just walk down this corridor, it'll be fine. And then these, like, red lasers come out of the wall. Mm -hmm. Remember? And they go in all the different directions. And they, like, jump over all of them, and you're like, yeah, he's gonna make it. And then, nope, he gets cut into cubes. I have a question. What? Why would our therapy sessions do especially well if our if our specialty is programming and not therapy? Well, I think that what he was talking about was also partly like it depends on you know I think he was just lying. 
I mean, that's possible, but I also think that it, there's some truth to the fact that some people, it's like, you know, when you meet a person and you don't really know them yet, but you assume, you're like, oh, they seem like a very warm person. They seem like they would give good hugs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's kind of what I assumed it was. Mm-hmm. Like maybe somebody who seems like non-threatening and okay. like warm. Not the name I would have given you if it were up to me. Oh my God. That's our baby. We gave birth to her digitally. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Evelyn, did they take your baby from you? Is she called Red Queen? It was a marketing decision. They thought there might be some recognition or resonance with the old version. I'm sorry, who are you? Oh, uh, I should have introduced myself. Sorry about that. I'm Erlen, currently the chief engineer here, but that's probably going to be temporary. Chief engineer? He looks like a baby. He's a baby! He must be fresh out of university. I know who you are, of course. It's an honor to finally meet you, miss. As someone who works with this program every day, I've often felt close to the minds who originally designed it. So to be able to talk to you now, just as another person, it's, well, it's an honor. Sorry, I already said that. I'm maybe a little overwhelmed. It's nice you feel that way. Honestly, I don't know if Eliza reflects me at all anymore. Uh, Maybe Eliza is based off of Evelyn. Does that oh, make based sense? based off her personality? Yeah, re- Eliza reflects me at all anymore. Maybe it's, like, the the core programming is, I don't know, a scan of her brain or something. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't know if that jives with, like, the information they've given us about how it kind of, like, takes in everything about the person and, like, collates all that data and then spits stuff back out. Yeah. Because it's supposed to be kind of, like, a machine learning algorithm where you feed it a bunch of data. Um, although, if I guess if you're the person who wrote the algorithm, then it could reflect some of your natural, like, biases and attitudes, you know? Mm-hmm. But I don't know that it would necessarily have her personality. I mean... Look at all this. I didn't There's mean been a ton of development since I left. I didn't mean her personality at all. I meant oh. they just took a scan of her brain, as in that's the framework of the programming. You know what I mean? Yeah. I doubt I would even recognize it as something I once worked on. I'm not so sure about that. Most of the work we've done has been in the form of layers on top of the original system. Or maybe she just did the entire programming of Eliza, and maybe that's why they're scared of her because she knows how to break it. Yeah. I guess like, what would a brain scan? Like how... I don't know. I just thought, what's some fucked up thing they would do? Okay, like because I I'm pretty sure they're talking about like machine learning, which is like al- like an algorithm. She probably just built the the first layer, and this is setting up. Yeah, we know how to break it. The core modules are more or less the same as they've always been. Raina reminded me that you're still subject to our non-disclosure agreements, so let me share a little secret. None of us really has a great understanding of what's going on in there. Hmm. That makes so that means that. We are the only one who understands how this really works. Mm -hmm. And that's why everyone's like, come work for us. Well, that makes sense because a lot of that, like, machine learning stuff, like, it's kind of like you build it and then you let it learn off of the data set and then people don't really understand why it spits out what it does because it starts iterating over and over and over. Though the machine learning now, hopefully in the future, it doesn't do that anymore because machine learning now is just kind of, machine confirmation bias does that make sense uh like com- like bias of the original like algorithm it'll see a pattern and then it'll do that pattern over and over again it doesn't it it ends up with more bad than good at this point yeah and i'm hoping in the future they find a new way of programming machine learning i yeah i mean i think it So this is actually, like, one of the areas that we, like, do, that we, like, recruit people for at work Mm -hmm. is people who specialize in it. And so, like, one of the big issues with, like, algorithms like this is that if you're building it to recognize a certain pattern, it's, like, the whole facial recognition thing about how facial recognition is really good with, like, white people faces because it's trained on data sets, like, that are primarily white. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's learned confirmation bias. But that's a problem with the person who created it, and it's also a problem with the data that it's fed. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's but, it's machine learning confirmation bias. Right. So it's, it can only learn what's be, it's being taught. Yeah, but, like, that's 
our problem. That's not the problem of like the machine learning itself. Like it is the problem of the machine learning itself until we fix it. No, but like we created it to be that way. Like that's what I mean. Hopefully, in the future, we create it to not be that way. Okay. None of us really have a great. Okay. I'm the uh, third chief engineer Eliza's had in the three years since you left. Hmm. That's quite a lot of turnover. Yeah. Even for this industry. Is there something about this computer that people they don't want people to know? You know. That's yeah. why they keep having new mission, new chief engineers. It seems like they don't want people to know something. The yeah. way Rainer works is he gives you two chances to do what you tell him you're going to do. After that, there is no third chance. I know. We get these people in who say understanding Eliza will be easy because they're familiar with the type of program it is. And Eliza defeats them in the end. It's not the type of program they think it is. Yeah. On that note, I do have some questions I'd like to ask you, if you have the time. I'm not sure I'll be able to help. Well, your deciding to work as a proxy has turned out to be an interesting test case. As I'm sure you know, different proxies lead to slightly different client outcomes, even when we control for other variables. We're studying these specific traits that lead to the best results. Vocal qualities, proxy attitude and affect, responsiveness to the client, that sort of thing. One thing that's strange is that when you specifically serve as the proxy, clients report higher levels of satisfaction, pretty much across the board. See, that's what gives me, like, what that seems weird. Really? The ratings I get don't seem that abnormal to me. Yeah, that's because we normalize them per proxy. So nobody feels too bad. <laughs> Just a little user experience trick. <laughs> oh, I see. Comparatively, wow. though, you're basically the best proxy we've ever had. See, so there must be something about it's based off of her or something because then it would. The only thing that I can think that makes sense is that she's syncing up with it really well or something. Mm -hmm. Any theories on why that might be the case? <gasps> Unless we're a robot. We're a robot. We've been a robot the whole time. Mm. It's possible Eliza and I think along similar lines. I've considered that. At some level, perhaps unconsciously, your design for Eliza's reasoning was based on your own internal way of reasoning. We all put something of ourselves into what we make. No matter how neutral we try to be, it sneaks in. That could account for your unusual compatibility with each other. Maybe. I certainly wasn't thinking of that when I designed it. Which I think is kind of interesting because, like, she specifically points out that she feels really limited mm -hmm. by what Eliza says. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that's why she's kind of like, yeah, I don't feel like this is me anymore. Because mm -hmm. if it was me, like, I would do a better job, essentially. I don't know if I like knowing this. Maybe she doesn't like the new layers put on top of her original design because they probably put a lot of safety things on top of what she originally wanted to do. Yeah. And it's probably less effective in its own way, but safer in that it doesn't try to fix a problem directly because that's kind of, then you have a lot of liability on your entire system. I think it's also partly, um, probably... Like, you know how, like, each of the sessions has, like, the little framework that it goes through? Like, it does this, then it does that, then it does this, and that always feels, like, very limiting. Mm -hmm. I think that probably what she originally designed was maybe a little more empathetic and maybe allowed for, like, hey, if you're going to have a proxy, like, they can be a real human. Mm -hmm. And, like, remember... And this is more... Her version was probably more guiding. Yeah, yeah, like a guideline for what to say as opposed to here is what you say. Mm hmm a more guiding but more complex mm -hmm. and was able to take in more variables and they probably put things on top of it because it was too complex and they didn't know how to make it work and B didn't want to be held responsible for variables and probably couldn't scale it to this to the degree that they wanted to because if they're going to scale like to all these different proxies then they want it to be like clear cut so you can have anyone just come in and mm -hmm. do it I'm certainly not blaming you for anything. It's just that true universality is one of our future development goals. It might be a problem if Eliza tends to like certain people more than others. Our aim is to provide quality care for everyone, regardless of any differentiating factors. It's a good goal. I hope you can achieve it. I think we can. Hopefully it's just a matter of uncovering the system's biases and correcting them. We'll keep tuning things as we go and eventually we'll have something universal. 
Maybe with some dynamic layers on top. That's the plan, anyway. We'll see how it goes. There are more questions I want to ask about the initial research you were doing at the time Eliza was first created, but I'll save them for later. And I'd like to ask some questions about Damien, too. Um, if you're okay with that. I'll understand if that's a sensitive topic. It's okay. Okay. Great. I need to run to a meeting now with the team in Romania, but I really appreciate you taking the time. The team in Romania? Yeah. They handle most of the progression and reward system. Isn't there a big time difference from here? There is. Sometimes they stay up late to meet with us, and sometimes we get up early to meet with them. There are teams in Munich and Hyderabad, too. As you can imagine, coordinating development is a challenge sometimes. Uh, the scene is seems seems very, very, yeah. very scaled. <laughs> Good luck with that. Thanks. Seems Come ominous. In. I'll contact you later with additional questions, but no rush or anything. Thank you, Evelyn. If you don't mind me calling you by your first name. It's fine. Yes, it's fine. Thank you so much, Evelyn. I'll be in touch. Asking permission to call me by my first name. It's like he comes from another era. I can't imagine the size of team you need to run something like this. Bigger than any team I've been on, that's certain. And Erland is in charge of all of them? Erland? Yeah, I think it's Erland. Erland said the program hasn't changed much since they worked on it. But then why do they need all this? Is it just for data? Data throughput and processing? Oh, the logo up there. Humanity's potential, our technology. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean.